Ryan Kaplan here with the Bigger Better Biz community, where I equip you with the tools and know-how to grow that bigger, better small business. I'm here today with my friend Don from Olivet Lanes. Don, how are you doing over there in Missouri? I'm doing great. Thanks. How yeah. about you? <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. We actually met, uh, so you came to my event at the Bowl Expo back in Louisville, Kentucky in June. That is and correct, yes. That's how we connected. So today we're taking a look at your bowling center and specifically your website. But before we even get into the technicals, I want to know your story because what I found at the Bowl Expo is that a lot of owners or operators, you have some great stories, whether you're multi-generational, it's been handed down, you have a passion for the sport, or you're one of those entrepreneurs that saw an opportunity to innovate. So tell me your origin story for all of it, Lanes. Well, I've, uh, I've actually been in the business most of my life. One year out of college, I uh, took a job with Brunswick uh, and uh, as a trainee in their training management program, was with them actually for 27 years. First, I really tried to get out of the business. It wasn't anything that was for me, but I ended up in it for 27 years. I always enjoyed bowling, and that's what initially got my interest as a, as a child, too. I thought, you know, hey, someday I want to own my own bowling center. Well, I lost my job. Uh, 27 years and as I crossroads during the session of uh, 2011, I thought, do I stay in bowling or make the change in my life? I just turned 50 and uh, an opportunity to buy a bowling center came up. Wasn't on my radar, but uh, I figured out how to do it. And uh, it was probably a great decision because it'll be 10 years this September now in all the lanes and it's, it's really changed my life. That's awesome. So, Congratulations. Ten, I actually just celebrated my 10 years for the for the agency. So I know that's no Great. small feat. So happy anniversary, mm. almost. Wonderful. And today, what we're doing is we wanted to look, I know that you said you've gone through a few different iterations of your website, which is very normal. A website's one of those things where business owners, especially you, you know, your business, you know, bowling, you know, leagues and everything else. When it comes to some of this stuff, it's like, I got to do that. It's an obligation. But uh, I was just presenting for Google yesterday and talking about how we're seeing more and more consumers that are turning online first when they're considering something, right? So the idea here is that this is kind of your digital experience. And in fact, knowing that you work for Brunswick, of course, you're probably familiar too with Cubic AMF. I was just on uh, the show Beyond the Frame with Jay Nephew, and we were yeah. talking about the same thing, how your website paints kind of that digital experience so that when it's setting an expectation so that when people walk through your front door and all of that lanes, they expect the same thing, right? Right. So Absolutely. with that in mind, let me share my screen here and let me know, are you seeing your I, website? I do. Yes, that is correct. Wonderful. So, so walk me through it. You had said that you just uh, redid it just recently with, with a new agency. Is that right? The same agency. They same agency. have a new template, new gotcha. template that they have a series of templates they use. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to ask you is this, what is your biggest goal when someone comes to this site? What do you want them to do? Well, I, uh, ease in finding what they're looking for quickly. And I know they, they, Stand. If they don't find what they, they need on your website, they're going to get off real quick. So, I mean, if they're going for open bowling, if they're going for parties, if they're uh, just going for our hours or, or whether it's food or dining, that, that they can easily access that. So I guess I'll rephrase the question too, because obviously, yeah, we want, them, we want them to be able to find stuff quickly and navigate, which is good. That's user experience. Very important for Google. With, for you from a business standpoint, what, how would you prioritize the things? Is it getting people in leagues? Is it getting people to set up events? Is it getting people just to come in and bowl onesie twosie? Uh, well, you know, uh, company events are very critical for us. Um, and that is a big uh, chunk of our business as well as, you know, really all, all, all three, the open bowling, the events and um, league bowling. But I think, uh, uh, event planner it, it's very critical to catch their eye and make it easy to have the information out there and that's what i try to do group events yep so the reason why i ask you is this right i i had a feeling right your your corporate events your team building events uh schools things like that that might come and rent out the the center those types of things are obviously big because you're getting a lot of people in there then they're going they're buying food concessions you got your food and beverage now coming into play 
So one thing that, that I would say is even going back to your web design company, right now, when we look at the top navigation menu, you're following best practices, right? They've organized it into six main links. And then you have your drop downs, which is great. And I even love, we'll talk about SEO too, but how they broke out adult parties, work parties, so on and so forth. My thing is this, if parties are your big thing that you're trying to drive, you have it right here, party with us. But I would even see if you could have a button right here that says schedule your event or schedule your party. So the thing that we have to do is be very, very deliberate. And if we're trying to get people to schedule a party right here, it's bowl with us, party with us, dine with us. So it's like a nice thing. Maybe they'll click kind of, you know, choose something right up here in the top. You have that leeway where you can add a button or even make this bolder and a different color just to draw more attention to it. So that would just be one of my suggestions there. Um, obviously leagues are big for you too. The thing that, that I see that a lot more, websites are using nowadays is a slider. With this template, did you have the opportunity or the option to use a slider instead? That slider's on the, uh, on the previous uh, version, and I'm not real sure uh, what the uh, rationale was for, for not a slider. Okay. Um, so you can go either way, right? Here, we've got this idea that you've got those three main things that you want to push parties, leagues, open bowling. So if you could go back to a slider or have them pop a slider in, I don't know how long it's been. And sometimes when you launch a website and then you wait a little bit, you're kind of outside of that window of opportunity, but you don't have to do that by any means. What you should be thinking about is right here. We're taking up all this room and the thing that we're pushing is request your free $10 open bowling certificate today. So my question to you is where we're taking up that much room on the hero image. And that's like your main emphasized call to action. How many people are actually clicking on send my certificate and requesting one? That's building our base, uh, which is, which is very critical. Uh, it's a fair amount. Um, okay. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you how many, I, I mean, I have to do a little research to get how many daily or weekly that we're gathering. Sure. Sure. And I don't, you don't need to know a number now, but I would say one thing is to look at your analytics and see, okay, how many clicks are we actually getting on this button? Right. And because with Google analytics, you can set up something called events and an event is a little bit different. So here, like when we're looking at Google through the eyes of Google, Google is making sure you have a good user experience, but they're also making sure that you're relevant. So if someone's looking up family activity, party venue, adult party, kids party, birthday party, bowling, any of those things, you have a chance of showing up. Google's going to decide on your chance of showing up based on over 200 factors, what we call signals. But one of those is what people are doing when they're on your site if they have a good user experience, and if they're not closing your site or pressing back and going somewhere else, that's called a bounce. Have you heard of bounces before? I have, yes. Okay. So with Google Analytics, one cool thing you can do is, you know, base standard model Google Analytics, you can just see when people are on this page and how much time they spend. But if you start getting into Google Analytics events, you can see how many people click on this specific button. So if you start testing that and seeing how many clicks you get, because don't forget, they have to click. Now they have to put in their full name, their email, and choose their gender, and then send my certificate. So you might have people that open that up, and then they don't go through with it. What I would want to do, just because this is prime space, I would make sure that we're tracking that event through Google Analytics. And then I might consider changing up the verbiage. Instead of request your free $10 open bowling certificate today, hey, get $10 towards your next open bowling session. Claim yours now. So if you can, if you can measure it and let it create a baseline for a month or so, then change up that copy and see for the next month if you get more conversions so, so that we can always be testing. Does that make sure. sense? It does. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, and then let's go down. We've got your about. Love your graphics as well. That's awesome. 
you got the summer program going. Pop that in for jobs, bowling leagues, open bowling. And then we've got these three. Okay, so we have six things down below. When you talk to your web design company, maybe they can, um, these, this bowling league and this open bowling, it looks like there's just space for something else. So maybe either mm -hmm. like stretch it out or something just so it fits the screen a little bit better because it looks off. Okay. You know what I mean? How it goes yep. from center to left to this. Right. Um, and then you've got this form, which looks like a jot form or something like that. So this is just your contact form, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So we embedded that on the site. So let's say that someone clicks on party with us since that's your big thing. Okay. Celebrate any occasion with a bowling party in St. Louis. So you've, the cool thing is you've, the company and you, you've worked together to, to identify some different keywords, birthday party ideas, bowling party, and then all of that lands, all of it, Missouri. Um, so celebrate any occasion with a bowling party in St. Louis. Okay, so the keyword that we're using on this page, I'm guessing is bowling party. Correct. Yes. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So we see it just for folks watching at home too. We've got bowling party right here in the, in the H1, which is the main header. We've got up here, as you can see, bowling party is the second keyword that's being used. And then as I go through, so here's something you wanna do. If we're gonna be using keywords, you've, you've already got it right. So we've got the idea of the title, the page title. We've got the headline, the H1. You can also use the keyword in what we call H2s or H3 subheadings. So you could have bowling party. So uh, adult um, bowling party or, you know, adult birthday bowling party. So just putting the word bowling party in again in H2, what you're doing is you're verifying again for Google that this page is dedicated to bowling parties. So we right here, we might want to put in bowling party. And then when I do a quick search, I'm only seeing bowling party up here. So we want to take that same keyword, since we're following the theme, pop it into your copy as well. And I would have it show up, you know, a couple times, maybe one time okay. per, per couple paragraphs or something. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Yep. So just pop that in, in all of these too. So adult birthday bowling party, kids birthday bowling party. Eve, this is where you're writing for the search engine. Someone won't, most consumers won't notice that. It seems awkward and a little foreign that you have to add a bowling party for each one, but you're just playing to the computer. So you're playing to the Google bot to make sure that it's picking it up. Um, and even, let's see, so click here to view our bowling packages. So if I click on that, now it brings me to kids bowling. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this. So on your links, you might, either you do bowling packages or bowling party packages, right? Okay. So then what the reason why I would do that is again, you're playing to that keyword bowling party. You have it mentioned in the links as well. Now, if I click on this, so even if I'm an adult, let's click on it. Okay, so it brings me to the adult birthday parties and bowling celebrations in St. Louis. So now if I look at your page title, adult party packages, company party packages. So I'm guessing when the company that you worked with, they went and did the, the keyword research, right? And they came back to you and said, here are the different keywords we suggest. Here is, uh, here's the volume that people are searching those keywords. So we think we can get some of that search volume. Is that how they did it? Or did they, was it just more of like, let's kind of brainstorm some different ideas and throw them in? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure on that. I'm not sure the, uh, okay. the history on that. So ask them, right? Um, are you, I'm guessing you still work with them pretty closely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, so, so my thing here is adult party packages. What does that mean? And how many people are searching for it? And I'll, I'll show you right here. So here's a cool tool for everybody. Uh, this is, um, a f actually I'll show you the Google tool. So let's go to google.com slash ads. <clears throat> 
if you're logged into your Google account and you go to Google ads, you do not have to start building an ad in order to use this. I'm just going to sign in. I don't even know which one I have. Let's do this one. Once you're signed into Google ads, Don, there's a tool here. So under the toolbar, it's called Keyword Planner. So what this tool does effectively is it allows us to search for different keywords and Google is reporting to us the average monthly volume. So how many people on average are searching for that keyword in a given month? So for instance, we did bowling parties. And then let's do adult party packages. Let's do adult birthday parties, kids' birthday parties, um, team building events, corporate events, work parties. Let's just look at those. So now Google's running through and it's going to tell us which ones have, so as we see right here, notice these are the keywords that we typed in. There's the average monthly searches, right? Okay. Are yeah. you seeing that? Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So bowling parties, 1600 monthly average views, not bad. Competition is low. So the competition shows how competitive your ad placement would be. This is more so when you're doing actual ads, but right. it also shows you a lot of people are not competing for bowling parties. So that is potentially what we would want to be using, which we were using on the last one, right? The bowling parties. Now, adult party packages, conversely, only has 20 views. And the reason being, one thing that I was talking about yesterday in one of my events was this idea that whatever someone types in the search bar on Google, that's called a search query. So we can't dictate what they type in. We can only anticipate it. So, right. you know, for us, we, we might call them adult party packages in the office, but that doesn't mean they're searching for it. So we have to anticipate. So that's where adult birthday parties, you got 1300, quite a difference. So that's where I would mm -hmm. revisit, look at, if we go back to that adult page, I would probably take out adult party packages. The other reason why I say that is because I think when I think when I hear adult party, I think of, you know, maybe some things that aren't so appropriate, right? Sure. Like, yeah. So, yeah. so we want to just, so adult birthday parties, you've got it right there. That's as we saw as getting 1300 monthly average searches. So I would change it to adult birthday parties right there. And then the same thing, company. So with company party packages, I'm assuming it's going to be the same thing, low volume. So those are keywords, you, you know, you can have, you really want one focal keyword per page because you're really trying to tell Google, this is what we're talking about. This is what this page is dedicated to. You can have secondary keywords like they're doing here, but I even think company uh, party packages may not be the best one. So you can use Keyword Planner to find some others to, to supplant it. Was that helpful? Yes, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, so click here and save on your next party. Brings me to the contact form. So I'm actually wondering you know, we have right here, click here and save on your next party. It brings us to the contact us form. I'm wondering if instead you could just put the form right on this page. So you don't need people to go anywhere. It's like, just fill out your info really quick and we'll contact you about your next event. So the, the other trick is, you know, the more actions you make a consumer take, the more you open yourself up to them leaving. So if they click here, now they're brought to another page, now it loads, now they have to fill that in. They might say, eh, it's too much. It just might be that, that straw that breaks the camel's back. Have a question brings them to the same thing. So instead of it going to just a page that says contact us, you know, if we can have the form right here, it's the one thing is it's keeping them in that mindset. 
I'm looking at adult birthday parties. I'm going to fill out a form about adult birthday parties. I don't have to click here, be brought to another page, scroll down, and then reason for inquiry. Okay, now I have to tell you again that I'm looking into adult birthday parties. It's just those little things that can probably prevent people. And again, if you have Google Analytics, you can see that. Are people clicking on this? That's an event. Are they going to that contact form? Are they filling it in or not? Now you can kind of figure out uh, if the form is working for you. Then request more info is going to go to contact us as well. Fine. So you've got your adult bowling weekend birthday party. Okay. Weekday. Do you have, so question, do you have any videos from parties that you've thrown? I don't. Okay. Listen, get some, get some of your league bowlers in or some fun families that you really love having in, have them sign a uh, release, a video release and photo release, and then just take photos of them eating the food, drinking, bowling, having fun, laughing, smiling, just whatever it is. You know, if you can do that, use that content. I would want that right here. You know, okay, this is great. Planning a birthday party. Show me a video of people like loving a birthday party at Olivet Lanes. And then say, you know, click here and, and click here to schedule your event. Mm -hmm. Boom, done. I'm there. Uh, the other thing, Don, so... With this button, if you're not going to have it, uh, if you can't put a form on the page, you could talk to your web design company about having a pop-up show up where it just shows the form. So that way, at least it keeps them on this environment. Just like when we clicked before and we clicked on this and it has this pop-up, same kind right. of thing. You could, you, could pop, you could put a pop-up in there. Okay. So I showed you page titles. Uh, we looked at you know doing keyword themes. The last thing that I'm going to show you, I know that we're not really getting time to go to your um, Google My Business, but I'll send you some resources for it. But I'm going to show you a trick. So let's go to google.com. So this trick, what I'm doing is I'm doing a site search. And the way that Google works, it's a giant index. It basically takes all of the internet or all of the publicly accessible internet, not the dark web, and it makes a copy of it. And then it throws it into an index that's like the index of the back of a book, except it's like trillions of times longer than a regular index. So when, when we're using Google, there are things called search operators. One of those search operators that I'm using right now is the word site colon. Have you ever done this? No. Mm -mm. Okay, this is pretty cool. So if you use site colon, and then we're going to type in Olivet, if I can spell it, olivetlanes.com. What I'm doing is I'm saying to Google, I want you to search in your index for anything at this website. So show me all the pages that are indexed related to site Olivet Lanes. Now I'll click on Google search. So it shows me 84 results. The first one you're always going to see is Google Search Console. I I'm guessing your web design company installed this. If not, they should. I'm assuming that since all of this is showing up, they probably did. Google Search Console, the way that it works when you have a website, you want analytics because analytics is tracking what's going on on your site, the user experience, where people are clicking, what they like, what they where they're leaving, a lot of really robust information about the experience on the site. Search Console is looking specifically at how Google Search brings traffic to your site. It's telling you if you have any errors, like 404 errors, right? Those dead ends. It's right. telling you if uh, there are any issues with images loading up. It tells you all, it's like taking your website for a Jiffy Lube, you know, multi-point inspection. Mm -hmm. So I definitely make sure that you have access to Search Console or ask your web design company if they did do that. Very easy to set up. So with this, the reason why it shows up there is because if you make any changes, let's say that you go and you change that adult birthday party idea, you take out adult party packages and do adult birthday parties. Well, you have to go to search console and you say, submit sitemap. That's going to say, hey, Google, come over here. We just changed our site index again so that you can re-up and basically refresh your search results. So we've got, this shows, what the site search shows is every page that's indexed by Google. It shows your URL that you're using, the page title, and the page description. 
without diving too much into the minutia of it, the thing here is that we want to make sure that when we see a certain page, for instance, birthday parties, if the keyword is birthday party or birthday parties, then we should see it in the URL, we should see it in the page title, and we should see it in the page description. Right here, we see birthday parties, so that's good. We have birthday parties right there, and then we just have parties. If I click on that page, it's just the parties page, right, where you can set up the different parties. That's fine. Down below, if we go to, so let's say fundraisers, right? So right here, there's a few things. One, if someone's looking up a fundraising event or a fundraising idea, notice how some of your page titles have capital or title case, and then others are just all lowercase like this. So that might be the difference for someone that's looking. They might say, you know, I'll skip that one, go to the next one, just because they're nitpicky about grammar and having title, title case. It's the smallest things, but these kind of details add up. And when I see more of them, uh, Olivet Lanes is the number one destination for school outings in St. Louis. We want to capitalize those things. That's me being nitpicky, but seeing this stuff over and over again. And then we also got, uh, let's see, so your page description here, bowling is fun and easy way to raise money for your group organization at Olivet Lanes. We host many fundraisers for churches, schools, sports teams, so on and so forth. Okay. So when we're talking about keywords, the, the way that I would do it is this. I would go to Keyword Planner, which we looked at before. What I would do is I would actually start, I would type in um, fundraising events. Fundraising ideas. You see this one right here? Hmm? See the difference between fundraising events and fundraising ideas? Oh, yeah. Right? 20 times. So right there, I would change my keyword theme, and I would consider changing it or create a new page. Keep that. But now this tells us create a new page so that we can get some of that search traffic. This is a big term, fundraising ideas. We might want to create a whole page. Are you looking for fundraising ideas in the St. Louis area? Look no further than Olivet Lanes. You know, here are some fun, uh, here, here are some creative fundraising ideas that we've done in the past. You know, a, a bowling event, a competition, uh, an eating contest. You could just come up with like 10 things that you could do where you can increase your food and beverage or you can get more people in the door. Does that help? It does. Absolutely. Okay. So I'd, I'd say look through and figure out what are these different pages? The other thing that you can do in search console is you can actually hide some of these pages. So like category archives for uncategorized, that should be hidden. Google shouldn't be able to see that. You can turn those pages off and say to Google, I do not want these pages shown. So what would, what would be an example of that, <clears throat> that you don't want them to see? Category. Right here, category archives for uncategorized. Oh, I see. Yep. And then if I click on it, it might be nothing. It's nothing. But that's the whole thing. It's nothing. And now it's a wasted click. So now they're coming here. They're like, what is this uncategorized? I don't know. And think about, you know, someone that might be a little bit older. Maybe their grandma or grandpa that wants to bring their grandkids in or their family and they see that they get lost. They're like, I don't know what to do. We'll just go for ice cream. <laughs> right. So it's just, it, it's the, the simplest things. Um, but I think those three things, and I'm always talking about working on your basics and getting them right. And actually yesterday when I was on Beyond the Frame, we were talking about how bowling is a game of adjustments, right? Same thing here. You've got your baseline. Now we've got to adjust a little bit. We've got to add a little finesse, uh, capitalize certain things, hide certain pages, and make sure that we're following those keyword themes. I think you'll, by doing that, resubmitting your sitemap in Google Search Console up here and letting Google know, hey, we did a little bit of uh, remodeling, come check it out. You'll hmm. have a much better chance of showing up and especially using the Keyword Planner tool. Now you're going you're gonna to be equipped to know, hey, fundraising ideas, great. Go wild, type in all the different ideas you can. And the other thing you'll see, check this out. So it actually shows us keyword ideas, team building activities. Notice that 27,000. Mm -hmm. 
That's another one. Hey, here are 10 team building activities you can do at all of that lanes. A whole page dedicated to it. An email you send out to your corporate clients. You put it up on social media and link to it. Send it out in an email campaign. There you go. Now you're going to kind of chum the waters and see if you can get some team building events coming in the door. Was this helpful? Absolutely. Okay. Wonderful. Do you have any other questions before we, uh, we sign off? Uh, no, I'm glad we're recording this. Because yes. <laughs> that's, go back. that's why I do it. That's why I do it. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. No, not at um, this point. So, so, so good. You've got your marching orders. Uh, also, I'm going to send you some resources um, so that you can pick away at your Google My Business and your business profile on Google. I have a, a great webinar that I'll send you okay. and some, um, some different resources that you'd like links and, and articles so that you can really chip away at it. I think just doing these things, you'll see a difference. And also, once you build these, and especially if you're looking in Google Analytics, you're measuring it, let's say that your fundraising ideas or your team building activities page is getting a lot of play. That's where you take the next step and then consider, hmm, do we want to put some ad money out there and try to get people that are looking for those team building activities and drive them to a page where we're giving them, here's the full team building experience we give you when you walk into all of that lanes. Boom, 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 boom. Here are 10 things we're going to do. Here's the food and beverage package you're going to get per person. Here's the cost. Sign up now or contact us. Call us if you want to learn more. Done. You just made it stressless for them. Great. Okay. All so right. let me stop sharing my screen. I want to thank you so much, Don, for joining us today. You're welcome. And your everyone, place. thank you. Everyone watching at home, uh, this has been another Blueprint Strategy Session on behalf of Brian Capper Marketing and the Bigger Better Biz community. Until next time, I hope you stay well, stay healthy, stay happy, and here's to your success. Mm -hmm.